I'm Vioni Dumel. This is Boston Lanka News bringing you news, views and entertainment from Boston and USA. Chief Justice Shirani Bandar and Aika denies any wrongdoing while the parliament getting ready to consider the impeachment motion against her. Accusers who bring charges against someone cannot be the judges as well, says attorney Salia Pires. International Tiger Group rivalry intensifies with the death of a prominent LTT leader in Paris. Asil Premachandra, brother of Bharat Lakshman, reveals how the police misled the courts. Sri Lanka's parliament appointed a select committee on Wednesday to investigate the impeachment motion accusing the country's Chief Justice of misusing power and having unexplained wealth. Chief Justice Shirani Bandaranaika denies any wrongdoing. Mrs. Bandaranaika has said she can easily refute the allegations. She also has said she will continue to discharge her duties without fear or favor and independently impartially and fearlessly in accordance with the law. The impeachment attempt follows months of conflict between Parliament and the judiciary. Attorney Salia Pires, Director of Academy of Legal Studies, Center for Professional Studies and Eisenhower Fellow, joined with Boston Lanka to talk more about this. Attorney Pires, what is your general view about the independence of the judiciary and the threats for its independence from the executive branch. Yes, I think uh, there are over over the years since the inception of the 1978 constitution, there have been in various instances there have been threats to the independence of the judiciary, from the time of the 19th introduction of the 78 constitution, and uh, when the uh, even prior to the year 78 constitution when the Chief Justice Victor Tenakon retired, and there was a new Chief Justice appointed, Chief Neville Samarakot. The second most senior judge uh, in the Supreme Court was overlooked. From that time onwards to the present day, there have been uh, instances where there have been issues relating to the judiciary. But in the last one year, we find that in Sri Lanka, suddenly there has been a spate of attacks and interferences on the judiciary. Uh, firstly, we know that there is at the moment a case in the Court of Appeal where a minister is charged with having attempted to interfere with the uh, MANA magistrate and the Secretary of the Judicial Service Commission. We know that there was an attack on the Magistrates Court of MANA. Now in the, this aftermath, the Judicial Service Commission issued a statement uh, sometime in September. The Judicial Service Commission issued a statement saying that there were attempts to interfere with the workings of the Sir Judicial Service Commission. Now the Judicial Service Commission is important because it is the body which regulates and controls the mind the judiciary in Sri Lanka. So the magistrates, the district judges who are all over the country, they are disciplined, conduct, appointments are all controlled by the Judicial Service Commission. So if there is interference with the Judicial Service Commission, there is a risk that at the lower levels that the magistrates and the district judges throughout the country will be affected. Now, following this, the uh, Judicial Service Commission making this statement, we know that the secretary to the Judicial Service Commission, who acts on the instructions of the commission, Manjul Tilakaratna, he was subject to an assault. Now, thereafter, there has been a spate of attacks on the media, especially by the state media, where the chief, especially the Chief Justice, has been targeted. It is clear that there is an interference with the judiciary in Sri Lanka by the executive branch and uh, I, I think that's a very serious matter for all Sri Lankans. It's a very extremely serious matter for all Sri Lankans because if you find the judiciary being interfered with, today it can be uh, the uh, uh, by the present day executive, tomorrow it can be by the executive of another party. I'm sure uh, you have a time to go through the charges in the impeachment motion against the CJ. Uh, do you think at first glance uh, those charges are sufficient 
to bring an impeachment motion against the CJ? Uh, I do not want to refer to the individual charges at present because I think that those would be replied to at an appropriate forum. But suffice it to say, the Chief Justice has, through Mr. Kandai and Neela uh, attorney at law, informed the media which published the perverted charges. She has said, stated her position. And I think it has been a very categorical classification, clarification, and she has set out her position. The, if one refers to the statement of the Bar Association, uh, the Bar Association also uh, has made certain requests from the executive and the legislature in relation to the impeachment. In one of your articles, you write that the entire process of removal should not be a legislative function but a quasi-judicial function. Uh, there are basic attributes such as independence and impartiality. But do you think, given the fierce partisan political climate and also the powers president has, and how the ruling party MPs toe the line without any dissent, the process will be fair for the CJ? Well, this is the grave concern of the Bar Association. Uh, in fact, I noticed, I observed that the Bar Association had, had passed a resolution, and that resolution calls upon the legislature to bring constitutional changes to bring to bring into place another mechanism the reason is this the whole impeachment process the parliamentarians are expected to play as you say as you quoted me a quasi judicial role now quasi judicial role necessarily means that people who are hearing a case must be impartial they must be independent now in the whole impeachment process in our constitution the weakness is that you find members of parliament who are sitting in form of judgment. Now, would they be subject to pressures from their own political parties? Can they be independent from the, their political parties? In Sri Lanka, we have seen, now unlike in certain other countries, uh, we see that parliamentarians generally toe their party line. So now in those circumstances, we have are grave fears as to whether there would be, whether uh, these matters uh, which should be, ought to be there, independence, impartiality, uh, will be found when the select committee conducts its inquiry. Now, to give you an example, in India, in India, a judge can be impeached by a resolution of the two houses of the Indian parliament. But before the Indian parliament passes a resolution, a committee has to conduct an inquiry and the committee, it's a three-member committee uh, which is appointed to, to conduct a judicial inquiry and those th three members are not parliamentarians. They are qualified jurists, a nominee of the chief justice, a nominee of the high court judges of among the chief justices of the high courts of India. Now, it is only after they conduct an independent and impartial inquiry that the legislature would be able in India to impeach a judge. So I think it is time that we revisit our constitution and ensure that this uh, independence and integrity of our judges are safeguarded. Nadaraja Matindiran, chief of the Liberation Tigers of Tamil Elam in France, was shot dead in Paris on November 8th by unknown assassins on motorcycles. 49-year-old Matindiran, known as Parithi, was in charge of the LTT Front Organization Tamil Coordinating Committee. Matindiran was known as Regan when functioning as a tiger cadre in Sri Lanka. Matindiran, who was appointed head of LTTE operations in France by Velu Pille Prabhakaran, was head of the larger faction which controlled most LTT activity in Paris. Killing of Pariti is a serious development as he is the most senior LTT leader to be assassinated due to overseas intra-tiger rivalry. The incident also effectively illustrated the nature and scope of the power struggle going on within the overseas LTTE.
there are two broad factions swearing allegiance to two senior tiger operatives. One is Perin Bananegam Sivaparan alias Nediyaman based in Norway. The other is Segaram Pillai Vinayagamurthy alias Vinayagam who operates from France and Germany. The legal system in the country is biased with unequal treatment between the ordinary people and the people with political clout, said attorney Upul Kumar Peruma, who appeared for the family of the late politician Bharat Lakshman Premachandra when the case was taken up last month. The family of Bharat Lakshman has been trying their very best to find justice for Bharat, but many observers wonder whether it's an unrealistic goal. Boston Lanka spoke to late Bharat Lakshman's brother, Asela Premachandra. Asela, uh, tell us how you feel about the way the police and the Attorney General's department handling the case of your brother's killing this far. Uh, if I briefly explain uh, uh, how the way they are handling uh, and how we feel about it, I can say uh, to us extremely disappointed. The police have filed reports saying that uh, Duminda is in a hospital in Singapore and he lost some of the memory about the incident and he's still not in a good physical condition to attend courts, etc. Do you have any additional information about Duminda? Yeah, that's a very, very uh, important question you asked. Actually, that's a very interesting uh, revelation that actually we, uh, we came to know. Uh, we, uh, as you said, the the, the police said that they were they were going to Singapore to get a statement from the Minister Silva, and they came back and said that they they interviewed the Minister Silva in the hospital. Remember, they said that he was in the hospital. They went to the hospital. They interviewed him, and the Minister Silva has told the police he cannot remember anything. That's truly just few months before that, right? And not even a few months, few weeks before that, we sent a pair person to Singapore to get information about the Minda Silva's medical condition. And then that person went to the hospital and made inquiries about a patient named the Minda Silva. So they said that there was a patient, but he has been out. He has been out of the hospital November 2010. Um, sorry, 2011. November 2011. So, so now these the people, the police, came up and and said that they interviewed him in the Ceylon hospital, but he wasn't in the hospital. He hasn't been on in the hospital for months, and he has been living in an apartment belong to one of the the the, the, the ministers and a support uh, to MP and a supervisor uh, uh, MP for for one of the ministries and very close to. Uh, president and his in his uh, apartment in Singapore. That's where he was. And these people, the police, were supposed to conduct an impartial inquiry, come back and report to the court saying that they interviewed him in the hospital, which was which was not true. So that's why we have uh, severe doubts about uh, uh, police uh, uh, conduct of police in this matter. And now, uh, you are making a very serious charge here. Are you saying that certain police officers have intentionally misled the court by providing false information about the Minda? Actually, that's exactly what I'm saying. That's what exactly I'm saying. So I think this needs to be investigated. I think uh, um, this this constitutes uh, uh, giving wrong information to the judiciary. So I think. Uh, I think it has uh, uh, merit to investigate and and, and and then not only to investigate, hold these this, uh, police officers' uh, contempt of court. I think that, that they need to be done, that those, those things have to be done. Uh, I think they, they give false information. That's the most uh, illogical argument that I have ever heard in my life. Uh, let's go back to how we argued at the beginning of this case. Actually, it breaks my heart to think of human what what's going through right now, especially after my uh, brother actually 
uh, to my brother's dad. Um, she is the only person right now is making a noise to the level that the authorities, especially the, the, the people who have the power in Sri Lanka, the top people, are not going to sweep this under the mat yet. She is the only reason because she keeps uh, uh, fighting for this. And now what, what they're trying to do is they want to silence her first. I have a lot to say to him, but um, um, but if, you, if I sum up that uh, into a few sentences, uh, I would say. Um, that concludes our news edition. We meet you again with another news edition of News, Views and Entertainment from Boston and USA. Till then, goodbye.